families, understood as consisting of a mother and a father with one or more children, have traditionally formed the foundation of society. But today this cornerstone has become severely challenged. Marriage and families are under threat. Lack of communication, poor conflict resolution skills, conflicts surrounding money, inflexibility, intellectual incompatibility, differences in worldview, unrealistic expectations, sexual, emotional or physical abuse and a consumerist approach to marriage are only a few of the many reasons why this seems to be the case. We grasp the severity of the situation almost intuitively, but how bad is it really? Looking at the South African society, statistics show that an average of 170,000 marriages were consecrated annually over the last decade. The same time period has seen an average of 32,200 published divorces, or 90%. This is conservative, as other sources indicate a divorce rate as high as 33%. The effects of divorce are far-reaching and pervasive, impacting on families emotionally, economically, spiritually and socially. Looking specifically at children, we see that 26,947 children under the age of 18 were impacted by divorce in 2008 alone. It is estimated that approximately 34% of children in South Africa live in single parent households and that 40% of these cases are due to divorce. Children growing up in such circumstances are twice as prone to suicide if they are boys, three times more likely to have a baby out of wedlock, 12 times more likely to be incarcerated, less likely to get married themselves, more likely to get divorced themselves, twice as likely to abandon their parents and religion, and more likely to lose both parents. We spoke with Tabu, a youth worker at Crossroads Boys Home in Salvacop. Tabu himself used to live on the streets and told us most of the former street boys at the shelter are products of broken homes. Yeah, the kids that we have, uh, most of them they come from the, the family, find the family, they they abuse them and they don't show that love for them. And some of the children, they just stay like with uh, single parents, like they stay with their mom. So when they stay with their mom, uh, if it's a son, you will need the, uh, the fatherly love. And some of them, they stay only with their father. So if you stay only with their father, they don't have that uh, the motherly love. That, like, the effect for the broken family, when it costs, it costs these guys. So. When they stay in their family, they end up being decided like no one loves me and no one's care for me. So it's better to me I can flee and go somewhere far away where no, no one can see me. So where I could start my own life or own the good life. And in the moment when they come, let's say they come in Pretoria, when they stay in the street, then that things of their parents, it affects their children because he thinks his parents don't love me. How can you, you love the person? because he think his parent doesn't love him. So that person have a challenge. Some of the children, they think if you tell them, he says, God loves you. He will ask you, how can God love me, but while my parents, they cannot love me, which is a difficult question to answer. Mm. But we, we have the easy way to show that God is, is different through, from their father, because God is the one who's perfect, like no man's perfect. Then we get in touch with them. Then at the end, they come to their senses again. They start to know that, yeah, I'm here in life because I have a purpose. I'm here in life because I have something to fulfill. I'm not here by incident. So, yeah, it's what we are doing. Our friend Pierre Duplessis comes from a divorced family and is now married with two kids, raising a family of his own and learning the struggles along the way. Well, I, my parents got divorced when I was, I think, about 14 or 15. Quite late. I think most of my friends' parents got divorced when they were, like, when they were four or five or six, quite early in the house. So, my parents were married for 15 years before they got divorced. And it's interesting saying coming from a, a, coming from a broken house, because a broken house would imply that the house was once fixed or right. So I, I don't, yeah, I don't know if it's, if you can say that our house was really ever right to begin with. The effect it had on me is I've got no reference points for, for a good family structure. I don't have the, the idea of a, uh, a mentoring father and a caring mother. I, I, our family was very separate and in, like individualized. And yeah, so I don't really have reference points. So it's kind of difficult to have a framework for when entering your own marriage and your own life. The way we think about our marriage and our family is we try to structure it as a, as a, as a team, like us against the world. 
I think the family is the base structure of society. So if the family is not working, then society won't work. If you don't have a safe place where you can go back to or a place where you're mentored and guided. And because I didn't really have a, a framework or structure for, for family, is that I do, what I do now is just take the, I just take the narrative, the scripture narrative of um, service and sacrifice and use that as a starting point. As we have seen in this video, everyone's family situation creates a different set of circumstances and challenges. Whether our history is filled with good memories or shame, we need to reinterpret our history so that we can live the now for the family in a hopeful way.